gentlemen welcome to american vindicta we have on with us special guest mr dan lyons he's one of our affiliates he is the patriot trainer and he's coming to talk to us about health fitness and getting your life back dan thanks for being on buddy doug thanks for having me on it's always a great time talking to you and uh, yeah so today i want to talk to people about the fact that the globalists are attacking our bodies from several different angles so for anyone that doesn't know me, uh, this is their first time, I'll just give the two minute intro on me. Uh, for anyone that's already heard this, I apologize. My name's Dan Lyons. I go by the Patriot Trainer. I'm a personal trainer. I have a strong background in exercise physiology. That's what I went to school for. I am also a nutritionist. So um, my goal is to help Patriots get in shape and fix their metabolism through uh, nutritional means, but also exercise too, and to kind of uh, prep us for what's coming because, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in the world and we need to be physically prepared along with being prepared with gold and silver and, you know, the second amendment and everything like that. But I just don't feel like there's a strong presence for uh, physical fitness in the Patriot community. So that's what I hope to bring and also bring awareness uh, to what these globalists are doing to our bodies. So I'm going to get into that today. And again, Doug, just thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, so where I want to start is the we, we have talked about linoleic acid in depth and the fact that this chemical that's being put in our food supply destroys our ability to make energy from the food that we eat. And it's directly making us gain weight and making us not able to burn our own body fat. And, you know, that, that happens through destroying our mechanism of making that energy. That energy is called ATP. And it basically our mitochondria is our engine for our, for the car. So if you can imagine you have your engine in your car, it makes your car go. The our mitochondria is our cellular engine. So if that engine is not working correctly, we can keep eating and we're just going to gain weight because our mechanism of burning body fat and you know powering our body, powering our cells through the food that we eat is not working correctly. So I want to tell you guys about the several different ways, because this is a multi-angle attack on our mitochondria done by the globalists and the food supply that we have talked about many times is, you know, the number one way that they do this through different chemicals. And, you know, a few of the, few of the chemicals that we have not talked about is, you know, dyes, things like red 40, yellow five, 
and other preservatives that are destroying our electron transport chain, which is basically where we make energy from the food that we eat inside our mitochondria. But there's many other ways that this happens. So, you know, the air, chemtrails in the air, and specifically aluminum and barium in our air, we're breathing it all the time. These heavy metals are doing the same thing to us. They're destroying our means of making energy from the food that we eat. And then, you know, our water supply is also contains fluoride, contains other heavy metals, does the same thing, you know, disrupts our energy pathways. So we can't make energy anymore. We have certain uh, medical interventions, I'll call them. Uh, I don't want to get shadow banned here, but, um, you know, those contain heavy metals too. They are doing the same thing to us. And then we have radiation. Radiation poisoning from 5G is increasing the amount of what's called reactive oxygen species, which is basically our the, the mechanism that destroys our energy pathways and makes it so we're gaining weight. Um, so we also have blue light, blue light poisoning, I like to call it. So that's from our devices, you know, phones, uh, laptops, computer screens, TVs, all of this blue light poisoning is going into our eyes and it's increasing the amount of reactive oxygen species. So the more of those reactive oxygen species that are made by our bodies, the more oxidative stress we go, we undergo and the more damaged our mitochondria is. So we have this multi-angle attack on our energy pathways. And just a reminder for, for anyone, um, the consequence to this is that we get sick. We get overweight. Um, we don't have the ability to burn our own body fat, like I said earlier, but also we become insulin resistant. We also have can have cellular mutations, which lead directly to cancers. And I've said all this before, but I just kind of want to remind people. But before I, you know, I was talking about linoleic acid, this one specific ingredient in our food. But now I want to have people zoom out and just realize that this is a multi-prong attack. It's in our food, it's in our air that we're breathing, our water, our medical interventions, our devices that we're looking at. It's in the air in the form of radiation from 5G networks. So all of this is making us sick, unhealthy, dependent on their system. So again, I know I've said this before, but when they introduce that central bank digital currency, we're going to, a lot of us are not going to have a choice because we're reliant on our medication and we're, we're reliant on our healthcare. So that's kind of like the, the first message that I want to tell people. And, and I also want to say that the exercise portion is extremely, extremely important. I've never talked about this before on your show, Doug, but there are specific ways that you can exercise that can help rebuild your mitochondria so you can make energy properly again. And I think that, I don't want to say it's an outright psyop, but a lot of these medical uh, professionals, so for example, doctors, nurses, they come from captured institutions. And these captured institutions are telling us always to do cardio, 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 cardio. They say that, you know, doing cardio is going to be the best thing that we can do for our heart and our overall health in general. And I want to tell people that these doctors, you know, that I have a lot of respect for the schooling that they've undergone, but the schooling that school, those schools are captured entities and they're run by the globalists and whatever the globalists want, it's going to trickle down into these institutions. And then your well-meaning doctor is going to give you advice and that might not be the right advice. So there's two types of, of different metabolism, all right? There is aerobic and anaerobic. Aerobic just means that you use oxygen to exercise or to do whatever task you're doing. Anaerobic means that the 
the level of intensity of the exercise is is so intense that we can't you we basically can't keep up with the demand for energy fast enough if we use aerobic pathways so we have to rely on anaerobic pathways which is making energy without oxygen and i won't go into the science of it but you can just break this down simply by saying you use aerobic metabolism when you go for a walk a nice leisurely walk your body has a very s- slow demand for energy fats metabolize very slowly so therefore you can use aerobic respiration which is where you break down body fat into energy so you can power that exercise now if you were to sprint there would be too high of a demand for energy you could not use aerobic respiration anymore you'd have to shift into anaerobic so this is kind of lie and i'm not going to say it's a psyop because i just don't know i haven't looked into it too much but it's 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 outright misinformation i, I hate using that word because that's what the globalists love to to say is uh misinformation but we by nature are not aerobic yes we have aerobic pathways but to exercise we are more anaerobic by nature and what do i mean by that i mean that look at the difference between a wolf and a cheetah okay so a wolf can run for miles and miles and miles and never basically never become fatigued but that wolf is is running at a slower pace compared to a cheetah who basically is very explosive a, a cheetah in nature is very anaerobic so explosive fast motions that's the difference between aerobic and anaerobic so that's why if a cheetah goes to attack prey the cheetah has to lay down in the grass wait build up energy and then be explosive to run and go get that prey tackle the prey and if that doesn't happen the cheetah gets fatigued very very quickly versus a wolf can run circles around a cheetah and basically never get fatigued but if a wolf were to have an exertion rate that was as intense as a cheetah it would basically fatigue very quickly. So that's that's kind of the difference between an aerobic and anaerobic. Now us as human beings, we are just more anaerobic by nature. We have aerobic pathways just like a wolf. We have anaerobic pathways just like a cheetah, but our metabolism is geared more towards a cheetah. So we don't have big teeth we don't have big claws we can't take down big animals our defense mechanism is to be smart wait maybe hide behind a rock and then use an all out exertion to climb up a tree and get away from a threat or sprint to the next rock and hide so that's an example of how we are more anaerobic by nature and at the doctor when you go you know for your checkup and your doctor is saying well are you doing your cardio are you doing your cardio again i'm not going to say it's a psyop um but it's misinformation our pathways our metabolic pathways as human beings are geared more towards the anaerobic side of things and that's why weight training works better for us so if we want to improve our body composition if we want to increase muscle tone and i'm not talking about getting big and bulky like a bodybuilder i'm talking about just if you're male you're female if you're younger older if you're if you start weight training you're going to increase your muscle tone which that muscle tone is going to therefore increase what's called your basal metabolic rate which is your metabolism it's how many calories you burn at rest So then that's going to slowly change your body composition you're going to start losing fat. So I just want to tell people the best way to lose body fat is not to do cardio on the treadmill. The best way to do to lose body fat is to increase your basal metabolic rate. So then you're burning more calories in a 24 hour period so you're burning more body fat around the clock. Well how do you do that? You need to do that through anaerobic pathways. 
And what is that for us? It's weight training. So that's why I, I always want people to know that weight training will give you way more results than cardio. And you can also get cardio benefit. You can Your cardiovascular system has huge benefits from doing weight training. So it's like if you, if you pigeonhole yourself into doing cardio, you're, you're not getting the full scope of all of the benefits. So my point in saying this is, is that you can rebuild your mitochondria through weight training. So you can rebuild all of that damage that the globalists are doing to us from our food supply, to the air that we're breathing, to the water that we're drinking, to all the radiation poisoning from the 5G networks, all of that, you can slowly start to rebuild your mitochondria if you do weight training. Versus if you do cardio, this is another thing about cardio, you don't get the same benefit with the rebuilding of mitochondria. You just don't by nature of it. So I just want to tell people that weight training is, is the way to go. So, and I know that you do that, Doug. So you, you probably agree with me, right? Absolutely. Um, the benefits you get out of weight training, they're, uh, honestly, I would say they're threefold because not only are you building up a dynamic resistance, uh, with your body, the ability to use that explosion, which happens in any type of uh, occurrence where you're needing that, like, you know, emergency situation, I've got to fight or I've got a flight. Um, mm -hmm. I've got to defend myself. I've had an accident. Some, someone fails, uh, something fell on top of someone. I need to explode through emotion to lift something off. Well, a treadmill is probably not going to get that. The elliptical is probably not going to get you that strength. You need to be doing, honestly, your core lifts, your your bench press, squat, overhead, deadlift. Um, you need to be working a, a lot on, I, I work actually on single appendages, one arm at a time stuff, static holds, isolation movements. And, you know, for how I work out, it's different than everyone else, but I will go for two and a half to three hours of working out. And trust me, you're anaerobic the entire time, but there's also a lot of aerobic because um, the amount of moving weight constantly and consistently that hits your lungs, that hits your heart, um, that's uh, getting rid of free radicals in the blood, that's moving all those blood cells, that's pumping all those vitamins and minerals through your body. Um, and a body that stays in motion will stay in motion. And uh, I, I like what Mark Ripito says, that uh, there's nothing wrong with being strong. Strong people are harder to kill. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that's a true mindset. Um, uh, weakness is not a strength, and strength is not a weakness. There's another famous powerlifter who says that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I know the health benefits are tremendous. You know, I've, I've done physical therapy for with my training sessions, not just for myself, but for many guys who've trained with me, um, you know, bad shoulders, bad knees, bad back, bad hips, bad ankles. And do you know what we've done to almost fix all of our problems? Powerlifting and Olympic lifting. And we just kept doing it. And we developed stronger muscles, tendon connection. I'm very big on muscle and tissue connection. Uh, because you may look really pretty, but the first time you got to move something fast, if you don't have that tissue connection, you rip something that's going to mm -hmm. suck. Um, so, and, and, you know, to go off of what you were saying in the very beginning, the times are getting to the point where you are going to need to use your body. Your body is going to be your first and most important asset. And you got to make sure that you're in good shape. For one thing, being in good shape means that your family should be able to rely upon you. And you should be able mm -hmm. to rely upon yourself. It's a good confidence booster. That's also why I, I recommend strength training, endurance training, and some type of combatives training. Mm -hmm. um, from there, you know, with, with your body being your asset, well, if I got to put my family on my shoulders and walk them a mile or two out of the danger zone, I know I can do it. Like for me, yeah. I got a, I got a bum left knee, but I'll just double up on my braces and I'll keep going. Like, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I tore the meniscus in my left knee and probably something else. Um, but 
this is how how hard headed I am. I'm doing 350 pound zerker squats two days ago. So I can't do a back squat, but I can yoke the weight right here and do 350 pound squats with a torn meniscus still. Um, you know, it it's it's just one of those things like when are you gonna give up? And when are you eventually going to say, I'm tired of giving up? I'm just going to fight my way through it. And developing that mental toughness, Dan, that I think is the epitome of why we beat ourselves up in the gym. Truly is mm-hmm. that mental toughness. Yep, absolutely. And I, I, I want to clarify for anyone that, you know, if if you're a woman and you're hearing us talk about squats and deadlifts and all these heavy heavy weights, um, you know, you, you can get results out of using lighter weights. And if you're a woman, you don't have to be nervous or concerned about getting big and bulky, like a man, you just don't have the genetic capability to do that. You don't have the testosterone to do that. And unless you took testosterone, (laughs) um, so I don't want anyone to get, get, uh, you know, nervous about that. And also it doesn't matter how old you are. So I, my, my oldest client is 97 and, you know, female, and I've had her doing strength training for the past 16 or 17 years. And, you know, she's, she doesn't get big and bulky. Uh, You know, what she's doing is she's increasing her muscle tone. She's improving the quality of her joints, her tendons, her ligaments, her immune system is stronger. Um, the just the overall health or bone density has has increased her her doctors are shocked you know um where before her doctors were saying oh you got to take more calcium got to take more calcium she's taking calcium the calcium isn't going anywhere so staying in her blood and and she's ending up with calcified arteries because there's no actionable hormones driving that calcium into the bone right so so now with all these years of training under under her belt, she does not take calcium anymore. Yet all of the calcium that she eats from the food is being delivered into her bones by means of the hormone balance that we've created from exercising, from doing these the strength training. So it's really remarkable what the body can do. And you know, you can you can say there are huge differences between people, and there are. You know, there's man and woman, (laughs) clear differences between that. But at the end of the day, we all have an endocrine system. We all have a nervous system. We all have the same basic, most of the same components. We all have a bicep. We all have a tricep. We all have glute muscles. We can, we can increase all of those good tissues and, you know, you, you just, you don't have to be nervous about being too old or being too out of shape. The the point is, is that you start and you're going to become a better version of yourself because that's really what we need in this country. We need a reality check um, because there's the group of people that, you know, they're, they're, they're oblivious, but then there's a group of people that they want to do the right thing. They see our, our country is going in a bad direction they're trying to prepare themselves in every way possible, but in regard to physical preparation, they might not be doing the things that they need to do. And, and they might be even wasting time because if you exercise correctly, you don't have to, to exercise that much unless you're Doug, because Doug has different goals. But for the average person who wants to just you know, tone up, lose a little bit of weight, get stronger, have more stamina, improve all of their, you know, integrity of their joints, their tendons, their ligaments. You actually don't need to do that much. And I'll give you a quick example. When I went to school for exercise physiology, Doug, you know, we we reconstructed this study and this study blew my mind. I didn't believe it until we reconstructed it and we actually did it. And I saw the results and I was blown away. It was the sedentary people, the group of sedentary people, and they did no exercise at all. And then we put them on a routine of doing a five minute warm up, which consisted of just walking and two minutes of all out exertion. 
And at the time it was done on an incline treadmill with weights in each hand and weights on their back for two minutes. And that was once per week. So five minute warm up, followed by two minutes of all out high intensity once per week. That's seven minutes out of your life. Seven minutes once a week. And all of these people, man, woman, didn't matter what age they were, they improved every aspect of their li their liver panel was improved. Um, their blood pressure decreased, their bone density increased. And this was all done over the span of six weeks. So I'm not talking about years. I'm talking about six weeks. All of these people increased their muscle tone. They decreased their body fat. They just in improved all their quality of life. And, and just talking to them, you know, on an anecdotal level, they were like, I have my life back from seven minutes a week. So it's, it's a wake up call that if you, if you just do it, if you, cause I think a lot of people get nervous to even just start. First of all, they don't know what to do because the fitness industry is, is the wild west, which I kind of like that because there's no regulations telling me what I can and can't do. But also at the same time, you go online and you try to find out like, how do I lose weight? What should I be doing? You get all these different people's different methods. So-and-so is this guru at this. So you're going to follow them and then it's not going to work. And then you're going to hear opposing views and you're going to get torn and it's going to promote anxiety because you don't know what's going on. You don't know who to trust. And then your doctor just tells you to do cardio around you are telling you all, all different things. And then you just give up. So um, again, I, I like the fitness industry because I don't, there's no regulations. I'm not a regulation type of guy, but I understand how defeating it can be for people when they're just, all they want to do is feel better. They want to gain their life back, you know? So, you know, you know, one thing that's really hard for people, maybe you've got some good advice is like, I tell people when they train with me, like, let's say I'm trying to fix someone's bench press. And I say, listen, like, let me, let me do a bench assessment on you. Let me see what your triceps are doing, what your shoulders are looking like, how imbalanced mm -hmm. you are muscular wise. And let's work on your technique and your strength. And the movement's going to go down because everybody bent is way too wide. And I bring everybody in close yeah. and, um, and everybody's, you know, their, their, their strength goes down. And so they, they get unmotivated. They can't do as much weight and I'm making them do pause reps and I'm making them do negatives. And, you know, now the workout hurts because, oh, we got to do it right. And, uh, at least five so far of the people that I've been training have increased their bench press by 80 to 90 pounds. Oh, I believe uh, it. I mean, it's like your triceps want to move a lot of weight. This mm -hmm. is not a good place to be benching. Look at how sensitive all that is. That is not yep. stable. And you bring everything nice and tight. And so, you know, it, it's, I tell people, it's like, think of it that in 12 weeks, we're going to rebench. We're going to get a new, a new personal record. We're going to see where your bench press is. Give it three months. Do these alternative exercise with it that's going to help with this position, with this lift, you know, and um, the amount of people who dive out of it after a week, and the amount of people who are like, you know, I want to lose weight. I hate my self image and a week into it. It's hard work. Cardio is boring and it sucks why I don't like doing it. And people you know, they have this goal. Like I want, I don't want to be a diabetic anymore. I don't want to melt into my couch. I want to, I want to live, <laughs> but you know, you go so far motivating yourself and, and you're, and you're mm -hmm. looking up stuff and you're buying supplements. Supplements are not going to lose the weight. Um, you have to lose that weight. You have to work for that. And exactly. so, People will buy fat burners thinking, you know what, if I just take this one fat burner every day, I'll lose weight. No, that's not how that works. You, your body for that thermogenic process to start, you got to be up and moving and sweating. Mm -hmm. So what is, what is your advice to the person who, you know, they're, they want to get in shape, 
and they're in that faltering stage. Like I, I know six months from now, the system will work, but I just, it seems so far away. I can't accomplish it. What would you tell that person? I, are you uh rephrase the question? I think I know what you mean, but I want to make sure. Someone six months in or so you tell someone in six months, fall this weight regime, fall this dietary plan and the program will work. You will look different, feel different, be healthier. Mm-hmm. And they get into it and then they just, they dive down. Usually when that happens, they have either some sort of medication that they're taking that they're not telling me about that's limiting them. Um, for example, if they're taking thyroid medication uh, and they're, you know, they have hypothyroidism and they're taking a dose of T3 that's very low, they're going to have trouble losing weight. Um, or if they're on depression medication and they're just not telling me, or if they, if they tell me that they're doing the program, but they're really not. <laughs> so I, 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 I see that every so often. Um, but the majority of people, if, if they just, if they just do the program, then they're going to see results. And the nice thing is, is you don't have to do a lot to see results. Now I am very big on maximizing your results with the littlest effort. (laughs) So for example, what, what you said, Doug, I'm going to just bring this back when you were mentioning the bench press. So Women don't get nervous about this bench press. You can do a, a chest press with dumbbells too. It's not just the bench press is not just for bodybuilders, but like Doug was saying, if you have your arm way out here and you're doing a bench press, okay? So you have your 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 pecs, right? That's your chest muscles. You have your pectoralis major, which is this big muscle here. And then you have the pectoralis minor, which is a smaller version of that pec major. And it's underneath the pec major. And that is a rotator cuff muscle. That's the rotator cuff on the anterior, which is the front side of your shoulder. And that's what keeps your shoulder stable from the front side. And if you're doing a chest press out here like this, and you have this big gap between your elbow and your waist, you might feel a stretch in your chest, but you're really stretching. The majority of what you're stretching is that pec minor, which is a rotator cuff muscle. And you're not even properly stimulating the pec major, which is right here. So you're not getting the benefit out of it, but you're also putting yourself at risk to tear your rotator cuff. And the the shoulder is the most unstable joint in the whole body. So it's very, very important to do these exercises correctly, not only for not getting injured, you know, preventing injuries, but also you're not going to see the same results as the person that benches or chest presses correctly, because you're not properly stimulating the muscle group. You're overly stimulating all of the other tissues. You know, you're in a bad position for all of your, you have four joints on each side. You have a joint here on your shoulder. You have a joint here, you have a joint here, and then you have a corresponding joint in the back. And all of those four joints let you roll the shoulders. That's why you have four joints is you have all of these motions that your shoulders can do, but you know, people underestimate and they say, I'm just going to press weights because there's not a big emphasis, uh, emphasis in the fitness industry on how to do these exercises. It's all about making things just constantly interesting, which I'm a fan of, you know, you, you need to keep it interesting, but it's, it, it's like, all of these fads of of going from this exercise to that exercise to all these crazy different things and not really learning the basics first of how to move properly and how to balance your body and get your body into the anatomically correct position, which is if you ever see an, an, an anatomy chart and you see the person standing like this with their hands out like that, that is the anatomically correct position and that is the position that a human being should be in before any injury set in, before any bad habit set in, before any overuse sets in. And a lot of people are overusing different muscle groups. For example, we have we live in a society where we're always in what's called shoulder protraction, which is when the shoulders come forward like this. And there's almost no way around it. Like we we're driving in cars, our shoulders are forward. 
right? We're sitting at a desk, we're typing, our shoulders are forward, we're eating, our shoulders are forward, we're on our phones, the shoulders are forward. Nothing is actually pulling our shoulders back. We have the muscles to do that, but we're not training them properly. So then we wind up with all sorts of imbalances in the spine. We end up with neck injuries, uh, mid back, lower back. We we end up with these injuries that you would not even expect were related to your shoulders, but it's because your body is now so out of alignment. And you know, I have a lot of respect for everyone in the healthcare industry, and this is no no knock on anyone, but um, and and I I I genuinely do think that chiropractic has its benefit. I do, but like I'm just going to use the old school chiropractic as an example because the new school is different. I have a lot of lot more respect for that, but the old school was to just put bones in the correct position, you know, through manipulation and then just have people leave, walk out the door and basically just don't do anything. And then I'll see you again in 2 days. And then I'll see you again in 2 days. But in reality, muscles connect to bones by means of tendons. So you, one bone is connected to another bone in a lot of sense by a tendon that connects to a muscle. The muscle connects to another tendon. That tendon connects to another bone. So you can put your own bones in the correct position and get back to that anatomically correct state where you have a balanced body. You don't have any overuse. Your joints aren't getting worn. And you can do that through training uh, because you're training those muscles to put bones in the correct position. So that's kind of an eye opener when I start telling people about weightlifting, because that's something also that you can't get with cardio. Because usually when people are doing cardio, they, they don't really have any, well, a lot of people don't really pay attention to their shoulder positioning their neck positioning all their positionings when all the all their posi positions when they're doing cardio it's it's not until we start to dig into the actual techniques of weight training that people say wow this is hard how do you put your shoulders back how do you tuck your chin back how do you arch your back and do all these things at the same time and that's when i have people that like you said Doug you end up going down in weight because there's so many muscle groups involved that are getting retrained and rebalanced that it's almost a workout in itself just to hold the correct positions because you're retraining your body because your body has learned bad habits over the years. And you might not even have any injuries now, but that's not to say that, that you're not going to get an injury tomorrow or next week because your muscles are so far out of alignment. And I'll give you one example. Chondromalacia is the the most popular <laughs> that I see most common knee issue. So you have your kneecap, which is your patella, and then you have your patella femoral groove. So the patella fits into the patella femoral groove, almost like two parking cones fitting into each other. They're both the same shape. And when you extend your knee, you know, that, that patella acts as kind of a fulcrum to extend the lower part of your leg. Now, what happens is when people sit for too long over the course of time, right? This is an accumulation of sitting too long. The lateral, meaning the outside part of your quadricep muscles, so the outer part of your leg, that's all that means, gets way, way, way too tight. And then the inner part of the thigh, it's called the vastus medialis, if anyone is interested, the only muscle that connects on the inner side to that patella is now not doing its job because the patella is being pulled, the kneecap is being pulled outside this way. And, the, and the, that muscle that's connecting to the inside is not doing its job anymore in realigning the kneecap. So then you end up with patella femoral pain syndrome, which spirals into something called chondromalacia. I know those terms don't mean anything to anyone, but that's the most common knee pain. And it's from sitting too long. And you can reverse that through exercise. And, you know, I've heard of people getting knee replacements from chondromalacia, which is insane because 
it's not even involving the capsule joint. The, you know, you have two joints in your knee. No one really knows that. You have your patellofemoral joint, which is on the outside of the capsule joint. And then you have your capsule joint, which is, you know, that's when, when you're talking about your femur, your upper leg bone sitting on top of your tibia and your fibula, it's surrounded by a capsule joint. And that's usually when people have arthritis, it's that joint gets worn down. But in this sense, I've heard of people getting a full knee replacement for the other issue. It doesn't even have anything to do with their actual capsule joint. This has to do with just a strength imbalance in their legs, which could be prevented easily through specific exercises. And it's just people sit too long. And even if you, you know, over the course of your life have sit too long, it's still chondromalacia can happen to you. It's let, let's say you were sitting for 20 years and then all of a sudden you said, you know what? I don't want to sit anymore. I'm going to get another job where I get to stand. Let's say um, I'm going to be a mailman now. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to be more active. I'm going to, I'm not going to sit as long because I don't like to sit. I, I've heard sitting was bad. You still have that muscle memory of sitting too long. So you can still develop that knee issue even when you're not sitting as much anymore. So this is a good kind of wake up call to tell, share with people that strength imbalances in your muscle groups should not be underestimated. You know, if you have imbalances in your muscle groups, they, that's where all the joint wear comes from people needing hip replacements, shoulder replacements. It's from being out of balance and not having muscle groups symmetrically strengthened. So you always have opposing muscle groups. You have a bicep and a tricep. You have your chest muscles, your back muscles. You have your shoulder muscles and then knees muscles, your lats and your serratus muscles underneath. And then you have your quads and your hamstrings. You always have opposing muscle groups. It's called your agonist and your antagonist muscle group, depending on which one you're training. And you know you need to be in alignment and you need to be symmetrically strengthened or else you're going to have an issue. So that's that was a little tangent I went on, <laughs> Doug, but I just want to wanted to share with people the importance of of being in the correct alignment. It's not just about, and I know I mentioned improving your quality of life through strength training, weight training, improving you know your bone density, improving all these all these things, you know, in, including your body composition. Everyone wants to lose more fat, but there's also the need for you to rebalance your muscle groups. And, you know, let's say you got in a car accident 20 years ago, your fascia and your muscles still have the memory of you getting in that car accident. And even if it's not bugging you now, it, one day that might surface. And I, I deal with people all the time that they say, oh, my, my shoulder hurts. I don't know why it's hurt my whole life. And then we do some detective work and I find out that when they were younger, you know, they were on their roof and they fell off their roof and they had this traumatic event happen to their shoulder and they never rehabbed correctly. And now their muscles and all of their tissues have that memory of being scrunched up, trying to protect the area so it can heal. Meanwhile, you know, that injury has healed 20, 25 years ago. It, it's not a problem anymore. 20, 20, or, you know, 25 years later, but the memory of that trauma still exists in your nervous system and in your tissues. So that is one of the big reasons that people still have problems with their shoulder or their knee or their hip or whatever. And they don't even remember why they say, oh, you know, back in college, I, I had an injury and you know, it's 20 years later and the injury is still bothering them. It's because of the, the, everyone's knows about muscle memory, but tissue memory in general exists. So your fascia has memory. Fascia is just, I don't want to get down a rabbit hole with that, but it's another tissue in your body. Your fascia has, has memory and, you know, myofascial release is a practice on reversing a lot of a lot of that memory that the fascia has. So I, I don't do myofascial release, but I figured it was good to bring it up because 
it's it's so relevant, you know. People have these injuries that have happened years and years and years ago, and they're they're still dealing with them today. Now, um, I want to I want to transition, and unless you had anything to say about that, Doug. Well, I was going to say, um, you know what? I know you've got a new program coming out. Or it should be out. Um, what is your recommendation for the types of exercises and uh, weight regimes that people should be doing? Like the average, yeah. just, what is even just the average? The what's the one thing that fits everybody across the board? Well, if if you were to zoom out, I would just say weight training. But what I do in this program is I actually, it's I do it in this room right in back of me. Here's my weights on the floor. I'm in this room. And I take people through a full workout. So we we train the back muscles, we train the chest muscles, we train opposing muscle groups, we train the shoulders, we train the arms, we train the legs, and most importantly, the core. So this program that I that I have people doing, it's I think it's a pretty creative thing because it is a personal training program and it's extremely affordable, for example. <laughs> um, and what you get is you get two personal training sessions every week delivered to you inside your, you, you make a username and a login and you have like this, it's almost set up like a, a course for anyone that's taken my nutrition course before. You log in and every Sunday you get sent two, two workouts, two guided workouts. And I send people, they're, they're pre-recorded. And the only reason that they're pre-recorded is because I don't have, I'm located up in the woods here in Maine and Western Maine. I just don't have the internet speed to, to train groups of people at the same time. So I pre-record them and I send them to people and they're all guided. Um, I take them through squats, um, Romanian deadlifts. I'm, I'm big on those. I know most people probably aren't going to know what those are, but I teach people how to do that. It's very, very important for the glutes, which are your butt muscles, your hamstrings, because your glutes and your hamstrings are your foundation for your core. So you can't start training and, and, and exercising, strengthening your core unless your foundation is built first. So I start with very, very basic stuff, uh, core, glutes, hamstrings, and then we, you know, we transition into incorporating some arms. Um, everyone wants to lose that jiggle here and, uh, you know, just, just lose body fat. So it's an entire body program. It's not focused on just one thing. And I would, I would tell people that this is not for bodybuilders. I'm sorry. Um, this is for the average person. This is for, you know, your just your regular guy, your, your regular woman doesn't matter what age you are. Uh, I have a pretty medium sized group of people that I, I send these videos to now. And the, the training sessions are about half an hour long each. And it's from A to Z. I take people from a, a warm up to a, from a full body exercise program and then a cool down at the end. And, you know, people that have started just a few weeks ago are already seeing results. So I send two training sessions per week you have the uh, you have the freedom to repeat those two as many times as you want but i have two for a specific reason is because i've always trained people in person for my whole career as a personal trainer i've told people unless you're doug and you're trying to keep up with with your ungodly strength you don't need a lot you don't need a lot to lose weight to feel better to improve your quality of life you only need to do two sessions. So, and then you need to go, then when you leave, you need to eat correctly because what, <laughs> what you eat becomes your body. You are what you eat. So, I mean, if you eat, if you eat cheesecake every single day and, and you exercise twice a week, you're probably not going to see the results that you're looking for. Although your muscle tone will increase underneath your body fat. Um, but, you know, I always tell people the bare minimum that you need is twice a week. You don't need to pay me any more 
than two sessions a week. That's all you need to see results. And then you need to get out and get some sunlight. You need to eat correctly and not be drinking a keg of beer every other day and not having pie and junk food. You need to really be aware of what you're doing. It's pretty <laughs> much just skip Thanksgiving altogether. Just don't even show up. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Well, the, well, the nice thing is that's actually a really good point. If you increase your basal metabolic rate, which again, I know I'm throwing around a lot of terms today. If you do weight training, you're going to increase your muscle tone. And even if that's one pound of more muscle spread throughout your whole body, you can't tell, but your body can tell your, your basal metabolic rate increases, which is your metabolism, right? If you increase that, that means that when you do go off the rails at Thanksgiving time, for example, you can eat things that, yeah, you can eat things that you probably wouldn't usually be able to eat and you won't really see the consequences, you know, because you have that raised metabolic rate, your basal metabolic rate is higher. You require more calories to sustain your body, how it is, because you've been doing weight training. And now, I mean, I even say to people, Watch what you eat, try to be strict during the week. And then on the weekend, it's okay to loosen up a little bit, especially, especially if you're weight training, because now that you have that increased basal metabolic rate, you have that freedom and there's certain things that you do not want to eat. Regardless, you do not want to load up on seed oils. You don't want to load up on just processed junk because some of these are forever chemicals. They stay in you for a long, long period of time, but let's just say you know, you, I can't even think of an example, but anything that doesn't include those, that's maybe something that you wouldn't eat, that you wouldn't think that was on your diet, right? You can relax and eat that. Like for, for example, Thanksgiving time, you can have the stuffing, you can have your potatoes, you can have the gravy and you can probably have double the amount and just not see the consequences. You might feel bloated for a day right? But because of your basal metabolic rate being higher, you're going to blow through those calories and you're basically turning your body into more of, it's like, it's like a, a wood stove when you open the draft and you're allowing more air to come in and you're burning through wood quicker. That's what happens to your metabolism when you start weight training. <laughs> so, but you know, I, I, I want to circle back and tell people this program that I have now it's to get you ready for two scenarios. So scenario one is, you know, it's, listen, it's summertime. Everyone wants to get in shape and everyone wants to tone up, lose a little bit of bo body fat. Um, everyone wants to kind of rehab any injuries that they have. They want to feel better, more stamina. But then also, you know, this scenario too, where, let's just face it. We don't have any idea what's going to happen in the world. The grid could shut down tomorrow. Um, we could have world war three. We could have various other things that I'm not going to say because then we'll get shadow banned, but I'm sure everyone knows what I'm talking about. We could have another situation where, you know, we're living in biblical times. We know that there's a 2030 agenda. We know it's linked to this one world digital currency that we all see in the Bible. For Bible believers, I am. Um, and we need to be ready for that because, yes, Jesus is coming back. Yes, God is in control, but that does not give us a license to not try. We need to respect the body that God gave us. Our bodies are God given, and we need to take care of them. We need to start exercising, even if it's not for us. We need to do it for God and for men. As the leader of our household, we, we need to be strong for our family, but for the women also. The women need to be strong too. The kids need to be strong. Everyone needs to be strong. The grandparents need to be strong. If we're all stronger and more physically fit, we're going to have a better chance at at least staving off what's going to happen because I forget the exact terminology you said at the beginning, Doug, about being strong is not a weakness. but it's so true. It, it is so true. Weakness is not a strength. 
and strength is not a weakness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when it comes to dieting, one of the things that that we've been doing is we want to make most of our own food here in the house and not have to buy it outside, which also is a good thing because for one thing, I know what's going in my food. Um, I know what's going in my food. I know what you know, if I self poison myself with olive oil, which we switched completely to tallow, by the way, Good. Um, if I if I self poison myself, well, then I can blame me. But Waterburger is going to poison me every time to include <laughs> Dairy Queen, uh, which is absolutely delicious. I own stock in Dairy Queen at this point in my life <laughs> from the amount of ice cream I've ate there. Uh, McDonald's is another one. Sonic is another one. Pizza Hut, Domino's, these places. The easy food, and you think, ah, oh, you know, it's real cheap. It is cheap food because it's it's cheap for your body. It's not good for you, um, mm -hmm. and you're you you just don't understand how much money you waste. Like me, family of seven, anywhere I go out, like if we had to stop and get fast food, that's a hundred dollars. That's <laughs> easily seventy to a hundred dollars every single time, and so I would rather cook most of my own food not to mention i do a lot of intermittent fasting like yesterday i broke my fast at like five o'clock just because i wanted to um you know and there's but there's also times like depending on what my weight training scale is right now i'm real scaled back i'm just more in kind of a i don't know like a cruise style right now i'm just i'm going through the motions letting the decompression happen in my body it's loading and downloading periodization workouts and so right now it's it's all real lightweight and uh, what i do mainly is static holds i do a tremendous amount of static holds uh, above my head static holds holding something in my hand and walking doing a farmer's walk um and uh, i also do a tremendous amount of grip strength because i think grip strength mm -hmm. for men uh, even women as well is extraordinarily important but um, the dieting, you can always clean that up and you can always save money. And we, we primarily just eat red meat, red meat, eggs, very few vegetables, very few vegetables. I drink copious amounts of water. Uh, we drink water all the time and then coffee, you know, no sodas, try to stay away from beer and liquor. And, you know, I know that's, that's things that people like to they like to engage in i'm gonna relax gonna have a beer um but you know like i in my mind i've i've come to the conclusion that i would rather be sober-minded as the bible tells me i'd rather be sober-minded i would rather be um as healthy as possible for my family to serve my lord and from there it's potentially serving my people again and because you're right, it looks like we're going to need that. So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, they don't like going to the gym. They don't, they're embarrassed to go to the gym. They don't like to go to yeah. the gym. So you offer something that they can work out, watch in their house and do it in the comforts of their own home. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's something I forgot to mention is, is you don't really need that much equipment at all. You can work out at home with this program. All you really need is dumbbells and either a mat to put on the floor if you have hardwood floors or if you don't have a mat and you have a rug i have people that use a rug instead and that's really all you need and i i just am starting to introduce um exercise balls they're like 20 bucks at the store you can get one i am a big boycotter of going to the store but you know i i can't make an exercise ball myself at home so I will break down and make an exception and spend $20 on an exercise ball. But no, you can do this anywhere. You can do it from your house. You could do it outside. You can, I have people that, you know, did this on vacation, which I wouldn't do because I do this for a living. I like to relax when I'm on vacation, but I have people that, you know, they, they, they do it anywhere. And all you really need is your phone or a laptop or um, desktop yeah, or tablet. iPad or whatever tablet. Yep. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, so I just, I, I want to repeat, we're going to need strength for whatever is coming. And let's just say you're not someone who is a fighter 
that's okay. You're still going to have to potentially walk through the woods for a long distance with the world in chaos. You're still going to need to eventually find a means of eating. You're going to need to have strength to maybe go fishing, pull a fish up on shore. You might need to hunt. Um, you're going to need to build a community and you're going to need to be strong and fit. So again, like the scenario of someone breaking into your house, if it's this lawless situation, roaming gangs in the street, you know, you will have the freedom now to be stronger. Um, and if everyone is just stronger, everyone's a little bit better off. I think we're going to do a lot better as a people in, in this country and hopefully all over the world, because it's not just about our country. This is, this is a global takeover. We all know this is coming for those of us who are Bible believers. And I just think that the more people that are awake and aware to the fact that we need to be physically fit, the better. And I've, I've I don't never, really, I've have, never heard a success story of anyone who went from, uh, being physically fit to obese, but I have heard countless success stories of people who went from obese and almost crippled, like seriously, almost crippled, reliant upon medication, becoming diabetic, um, people in and out of the hospital body is very sick going through depression and then just said, screw it. I'm getting in shape. And they did whatever mm -hmm. they had to do. And by the time they got in shape, um, their mental health, which is something that is not talked about a lot in the physical uh, fitness community is the mental health, the amount of endorphins that are released. Um, you know, it's it, exercising is anti-depression. That's mm -hmm. your anti-depression pill is exercising. Anytime that I feel like really crappy, you now this is just Doug, don't do what Doug does. But if I have like, I'm feeling really crappy, I'm upset, I will just, I'll, I will, what we call um, fighting the demons in the weight room, I'll load up the uh, overhead press or clean and jerks uh, or just deadlift. And I will sit there for two hours and do the same thing over and over and over again until I'm just, I'm done with being upset. And you know what that makes me do? That makes me take all the stupid stuff I was going to say, and I might have done, and I did it right there to that barbell. And so it's a saving grace for me personally, but you know, the, you've got to have an outlet. What's your outlet? Some people's outlets, pornography, extraordinarily unhealthy for you, and it's a sin. Some people's outlet is narcotics, extraordinarily unhealthy for you, and it's a sin. Some people's outlet is uh, alcohol extraordinarily extraordinarily unhealthy for you and if you are relying upon alcohol to get rid of your depression that's a sin mm -hmm. so the other part is people overeat mm -hmm. right once again gluttony that's a sin and it's extraordinarily unhealthy when you're extraordinarily unhealthy who are you helping and who are you hurting you're helping exactly. yourself and hurting everyone else around you um you know and it's not a peer pressure thing but as you've been saying over and over again, everybody should be in this Spartan mentality of being strong together, especially we Christians. You have a whole mm. world that's waiting to come down upon Amen us. Amen on that. Amen. Do you, do you not think you may not ever have to take you and your loved ones and possessions and run up the side of a mountain? I go back to what happened in Armenia last year. Um, last year and then the beginnings of this year when Azerbaijan was chasing their military, chased an entire village up a hill that led into the mountains. Oh, by the way, it's winter. And all they had was all they had on them. Um, you know, the average person who thinks they'll never be strong or they'll never they'll never need strength or this type of physicality. Is that, uh, God will just take care of me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God gave you a brain in between two ears and two eyes. Um, and he gave you a, the, the, the greatest piece of machinery that man still cannot understand, which is the human body. Like 
If it's broke, it can heal itself. By working out, you can heal yourself in multiple different ways. Don't make an idol of yourself in your workout, but it only makes you better. You know, it mm-hmm. only makes you better. Um, quick question for you. Yeah. What do you, what do you think about kettlebells? Oh, I, I mean, I, I think that they're great. I, I have people use kettlebells sometimes in person. Um, I just don't include them now in this program because I like to keep things very simple. But no, I, I, I have people doing squats with kettlebells, um, hip thrusts. I really try to work on the technique before I have people grab a kettlebell and just swing the weight. Um, but no, I, I think that they're they're very, very useful. It's just I like to build people's strength with very basic motions with dumbbells before we even get to kettlebells. But yeah, there's there's a little there's a little technique that comes with that. See, like I, I use dumbbells, as you know this. I use dumbbells, mm-hmm. I use barbells, I use kettlebells quite a bit actually for agility. Agility and stretching, um, mm-hmm. and more of a, a dynamic movement. Um, like a kettlebell swing or a one arm, yep. um, a one arm cling. I like to use the kettlebells, but I also like using Olympic rings. Um, I mm-hmm. find that the as a man, a lot of your pressure from uh, what would you call it? Um, depression, anxiety resides in your shoulders, as we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. And it causes bad back issues. Picking up your kids, if you're I, there's like a fulcrum point, if like that child is right here and you don't use your back and legs to pick that child up and only back, man, do like I did. And one day your back's just going to go out on you. Um, yeah. But I, I like using, um, I like using Olympic rings for the inverted row. I, I almost feel like there's very few things out there that hits grip strength takes care of the biceps and shoulders, but it is tremendous power that comes from that inverted row. Um, and I don't know, I, I feel like a, I feel like a chimpanzee afterwards. So I feel like my back's like this wide, but yeah, that's, a, that's been one of my favorite things and it doesn't require weight. It's your weight and it's body weight. I've mm-hmm. gotten very, very big on body weight. What says you about yeah. body weight? Oh, I mean, uh, I, I do a lot of stuff with body weight. Um, there's, you can get a great workout just by using 50% of your body. And then the other half would be incorporating very light dumbbells. So yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of using your body weight to get in shape. Now things like training the shoulders, training the arms, uh, training the hamstrings and a couple other different muscle groups are sort of a little bit difficult to do um with no resistance with just the weight of your body but um that's not to say that i don't have people do those motions without weight at first and then we start adding weight so that's why it's about a 50 50 but you know core chest um legs can done can be done with body weight but so i i kind of like to use both body weight and some resistance. And as we were saying before, you don't have to use a lot of weight. You just have to really focus on learning the correct techniques and the correct form. And you can get quite a workout just from that. And I also want to just touch on something you said about the shoulders coming up because of stress as a man. Now, people might not be aware of this, and this might be something that people are very interested in. Having the shoulder go into elevation and protraction, that's just when you're coming up and in like this, is a response to stress. Think about all of the important tissues here, okay? All of your arteries are right here. This is a very, very, very important part of your body right here. And what what happens when you go into shoulder elevation and protraction? You protect your neck. So if you were to get attacked by a wild animal, or if you were standing somewhere and a tree branch fell, the first thing you would do is do this, okay? You would you would dip your head down and your shoulder would come up like this into shoulder elevation, and then it would come forward into protraction to protect your neck. That is a response to stress. Now, what happens is when people are chronically under stress, even a low level of stress, you might not even think you're stressed, 
But if you have a, a, a chronic underlying low level of stress, your shoulders will start to come up and you'll start to train your shoulders to be up in, in shoulder elevation and, and into protraction, which feeds the fact that we're always rounding the shoulders forward. And then you're going to wind up with all sorts of neck issues and, and all sorts of upper mid and lower back issues because of that. So people might not be aware of that, but that is a stress response. Protecting your neck is supposed to be for a momentary issue. Again, you get attacked by a wild animal. You're not going to be getting attacked by a wild animal all day, every day, but the stress response is to protect your neck and people that are chronically stressed, even low level will start to go into those bad postures. They will start to elevate and protract the shoulder forward. And your body thinks that it has to protect your neck. Even if you're just sitting at the office, even if you're just sitting on the couch, if you're driving, there's, there's, there's no talk by doctors, nurses, any leaders about put your shoulders down. Make your neck long. You're not getting attacked by a wild animal. There's no tree branch falling on you. You're inside your house. You're inside the office. And just relearning that tissue memory, just to come back to what we were saying about tissues have memory. So even if you're stressed for 10 years <laughs> and then suddenly you have zero stress, your tissues still have the memory of being under stress. Your nervous system has that memory. And you're gonna you're gonna have issues with posture in your upper back because of that. So I, I figured that was a little fun fact to go into Doug. No, um, uh, posture is yeah. a huge thing. I'm very big on good posture uh, the Marine Corps. I mean, force you to do it chest up, you know, big chest, shoulders back, head up. This is, mm -hmm. this would be like your, your perfect postures to kind of sit like this. Yep. Not yep. that fake Sylvester Stallone. Like, yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah guys nobody cares all right nobody, nobody cares. um yep you know so um and then you have the guys who walk around flexing their traps all the time trying to try it's peacocking once again nobody cares and you're gonna be really sore later um exactly so, exactly so for me like i'm i'm in this chair for hours out of the day recordings doing editing uh taking interviews and so I'm always reminding myself, especially because I look into the camera and I see myself, big chest, sit up, sit up, you know, don't slouch over like this. We all have mm -hmm. that time where we do it. Um, but, you know, that will develop such problems in your neck and in your back over time. And then you want to go and throw, you guys want to go and throw this gear on, go throw the plate carrier and the helmet, the gun, add 30 pounds to you, 40 pounds to you and be out of shape. Um, I, I find it interesting as we talk about world war three, as we talk about people who are, you know, preparing for the Russians and civil war and whatever, and most people aren't prepared to jog one lap around a track. You know, I mean, you're, I, I don't mean to be facetious when I say this, many people in that mindset. If you don't watch what you're doing and correct bad habits, not just your, your dieting, but also your lack of exercise, the first casualty in your war is going to be you trying to get to the war and you're not going to show up for it. So true. So, I mean, it's, that's, that's hard truth. It's, it's so true. And, um, one thing to go, to go back to this program, uh, I, I want to, I forgot to mention this earlier. So this program, this personal training program, it's interactive. I'm not just sending people videos and it's just like this library of videos. It's interactive in the sense that people can comment, can ask questions, can leave feedback on each session. I get notified. I can answer questions. And I also use all of that to craft next week's personal training session. So I'm doing this with people on a weekly basis. I don't just have this big library of pre-recorded videos and I'm just sending people like a one-way street. This is interactive and 
I'll just tell people it's the same price as a as a Netflix subscription. <laughs> so I'm I'm excited to be able to offer this to people. What's the, what's the price be, of it per month? It's fourteen ninety nine per month, and you get two personal training sessions every week. So on average, if there's four weeks in a month, you get eight half hour, anywhere from twenty five minutes to thirty minutes, eight sessions, which equals less than two dollars per month. I mean per per session. So fourteen ninety nine a month, and also if you if you enter um, Doug's promo code, you get the first month half off. So it brings it down to, I think, $7.49 for the first month, which is, uh, hey, at, at this rate, that's the that's the price of a coffee these days. Which people need to know that the promo code is just Doug, D-O-U-G, just Doug. If you continue to watch all the way to the end where you see our affiliates, you'll see uh, Dan Lines, the Patriot.com, you'll see his actual promotional um, uh, video, and it'll have that code in there. So if you forget it, promo code is just Doug, D-O-U-G. Absolutely. And I just, I want to say one last time, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what physical condition you're in now. If you have a hundred pounds, if you have 200 pounds to lose, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, if you are a young person, if you are an older person, if you have, you know, two bad knees, two bad hips, two bad shoulders, you can, you can still exercise. I give all sorts of accommodations to people. You know, if, if I have people doing a push up, there's not many people that can do a push up. <laughs> so the point is to, to meet people where they're at. I give like three or four different modifications to the push-up and I show people them here. And, you know, I have people that have had shoulder replacements, um, all sorts of issues with their hips, whatever. I have them doing exercises that they're right for them. It's not just a one size fits all and tough luck. If you can't do push-ups, I, you know, we can do push-ups using the wall standing. We can do push-ups using your knees. You can do push-ups in two other positions that are that are kind of in the middle of the road, which the point is, is to take people and slowly get this group of people together that we can get stronger and more fit together. And we can fight this global takeover. I'm telling again, you, again, all you need. Yeah. All you need yeah. is dumbbells and a, and a mat or a rug. This is something that people should be doing. If you do not have a basic level of fitness and you're looking for it and you don't want to go and waste your money at a gym, be around people and deal with all that drama. You should be taking this course from Dan Lyons and you need to be getting in shape. I mean, outside of that, eating right, going outside, walking and exercising, working out in the yard. I mean, it does not take much for the body to become physically back in shape and why would you not want to benefit from that? And I, I don't, I can't understand. I cannot conceive why people choose to be out of shape, except for the, the fact that Americans are extraordinarily comfortable and very complacent and a day mm -hmm. in time will happen when that is going to come to bite you in the butt and it's too late. It's too late. It doesn't have to be when doomsday happens. It could be the next car wreck away. It could be your house being on fire. It could be anything that the average American has already dealt with. And, you know, for me, once again, if I did not have my own training regimen, um, I'd be taking this course. You know, I the nutritional course, for one thing, is worth the money to learn. Because, my Lord, Dan, do, do you learn a lot? Like, we... We changed a lot of my diet. Look, I'm not going to lie to you. Like the, the Huey doughy stuff. I love ice cream, cakes, donuts, Snickers, all that stuff. Everything that's bad for you that you've named to me before offline. I eat every bit of it and it's horrible for you. Um, but me currently, I'll tell you my goals, Dan. I'm 295 ish right now. Uh, I may not look my weight, but I'm 295. But. I'm trying to get down realistically to 270. 
and then I'm going to reevaluate myself. And I'll tell you, my, my my mindset right now is I'm going out of wanting to do the strongman training. I'll never quit powerlifting because I I feel, for one thing, I'm comfortable with it. I'm good at it. Uh, it it's always something that I can push myself, and I like those strength uh, techniques. But I want to be way more athletic. That's mm-hmm. my thing. I want to be athletic again because I feel like a time's coming where, man, I'm going to have to be able to move and run and juke and jive again. And I want to make sure that I can and not hurt myself the first day. That's the worst thing. Like, oh, I'm so ready. And I'm sprinting to whatever cool idea I think I'm fixing to go do. And you pull your hamstring, hurt yourself. Yeah. And now we're back to square one. Well, that that's the thing is I, I think you touched on it earlier. You were talking about, you know, people reach a certain point and then they, and then that inspires them to make a change. Well, uh, we being Christian patriots, that time is now. <laughs> 2030 agenda is here now. There are steps being put into place now. So I don't know, guys, I just, I, I wouldn't wait. <laughs> That's, that's, that's my point. Our, our time is now it's, we, we can't, uh, we can't put this off. Yeah. Dan, let people know about the other courses that you put on, uh, where they can find it. Uh, make sure that you plug your YouTube and rumble, uh, because I don't Mm -hmm. think most people know that. So come on, man, let's, let's help motivate you a little bit. Oh yeah. Uh, Thanks Doug. Yeah. You, you, I mean, you can find me at the Patriot trainer.com. Um, again, that's the Patriot trainer.com Doug, I'm sure you'll put a link. Uh, there's a nutrition course, which helps you fix your metabolism so that all of that stuff we were talking about earlier about your mitochondria, Tremendous your electron knowledge. transport chain. Yeah. The, the ability for you to actually burn body fat again and fix your metabolism through different foods and what to stay away from and what to gravitate towards. You can find that all in, um, the nutrition course that I sell on that website. And you can also find the personal training um, course or the personal training s- subscription membership. And I just want to say being a subscription membership, you can cancel at any time. There's no hidden fees like a gym sometimes does one year commitment cancellation fees. There's none of that. It's very transparent. I just want to help people. Um, if you enroll in this and you want to cancel the next day, you can do it yourself. You don't need to jump through hoops. Um, there's, there's no hidden, there's, there's no shenanigans going on. I'm not trying to screw people here. So you can find both of those at the Patriot trainer.com. You can enter the promo code, Doug, um, you get 50% off of your first month. If you do, um, the training program, you also get 50% off. This is new. It used to be 20%, but you now get 50% off of the nutrition course, which is quite a good deal. Um, And also you can find me on rumble. I just started a rumble channel last week. I'm going to, I'm going to try to do one video every week. It might be, looks like this, this might, I might have to skip this week, but subscribe to my rumble channel. I'm going to have all sorts of useful content on there. It's just the Patriot Trainer. Um, you can also find a link to my Rumble right on my website, thepatriottrainer.com. And you can also follow me on YouTube. Uh, YouTube, I have a lot of uh, like on a whim tips and tricks for dieting and getting in shape. But my actual um, show that I'm that I just started last week, I'm going to be doing that more so on Rumble. So if you can follow me on Rumble and YouTube, check check me out at thepatriottrainer.com. But don't don't forget to enter that promo code Doug uh, for anything on the patriottrainer.com and, and you'll get 50% off. Right on, Dan. Well, dude, thanks for coming on. And ladies and gentlemen, please check out the website. If you are questioning on whether or not you need to be getting in shape, you probably need to be getting in shape. So contact Dan. If this is for you, then please sign up for that subscription. The nutritional video is excellent. Like my wife and I were watching like that's it's field with knowledge so uh yeah dan thanks for coming on guys it's never too late to get in shape so 
Thanks so much, Doug. I, I appreciate your time. I appreciate talking to your audience and I just, I'm just here to help people. So thank you again for giving me this opportunity. Absolutely, brother. Well, we'll be seeing you again. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Dan Lyons, the Patriot Trainer.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Stay frosty. What's the need for training? We train because we care about others. We agree to stand, fight, and die for those we love. Become an asset to your community, not a liability. Visit VindictiveSolutions.com. Come get some training. Acta non verba. Deeds, not words. Shoot Move Communicate courses are $600 a person. Location is Teleco Plains, Tennessee at ReadyMade Resources. We provide the training equipment for you, but you will need gloves. There is no live fire at our training courses. We use airsoft and sim munitions. Camping is allowed on site. There are inexpensive cabins and hotels in the area for renting. You can bring and train in your own equipment. You can also visit the ReadyMade Resources store and go shopping for any of your tactical and preparedness needs. We do more than just train. We fellowship together and minister to those who need it, discuss current and future events, we pray together, we make new friendships and network, show new gear that we are testing, evaluate gear that the students are using, 
give a demonstration on night vision and thermal equipment that we use, discuss methods and concepts of prepping and training, and help students set up their tactical gear and how to use it. Our goal, to give you the skills to survive deadly encounters, promote good leadership skills, provide instructions on different methods of training and techniques, how to use various tactical equipment and medical equipment, provide verbal communication skills while under duress, provide team building and problem solving skills, provide challenging scenarios that will require outside the box thinking, develop encouragement, self-confidence and self-reliability, and preach the good news of Jesus Christ to anyone who would listen. Hey, I'm Dan Lyons and I'm a personal trainer. I'm here to help patriots understand why they have trouble losing weight. See. The globalists use specific chemicals in our foods, and these chemicals do two things. Number one, these chemicals destroy our ability to create cellular energy from the food that we eat. So this means now we're eating food and we're storing that food as body fat instead of burning that food for fuel. And number two, these chemicals destroy fatty acid beta oxidation, which is your body's own mechanism of burning body fat. So this is why everyone has trouble losing weight. Do you remember how easy it was for you to lose weight when you were in your early 20s? What if I told you that you could get that back? I put together a comprehensive online nutrition course for patriots who want to fix their metabolism and start losing weight again. The course comes with 13 interactive lessons, an optional graded final exam, four downloadable guides, all to help you make better choices while shopping, one beginner sample workout to get you started on your exercise program, a 20 minute abdominal and core workout video, along with much more. Throughout this course, you will have the opportunity to ask me questions and connect with other like-minded patriots. Reclaim your metabolism today. Have you been looking for a trusted long-term storable food company? We have a solution for you. Simply Clean Foods is dedicated to providing the best quality food you can buy next to fresh from a farmer's market. Our line of resealable fruits, vegetables, and meats are suitable for everyday use, and you won't have to worry about throwing away valuable groceries ever again. Our food is completely GMO-free, and our stringent quality controls, plus testing for heavy metals, makes us unique in the storable foods market. Simply Clean Foods' primary focus is to bring clean food to people all around the world and change the way we look at freeze-dried food in our daily cooking. When you purchase from simplycleanfoods.net, not only will you be receiving high-quality food, but you will also be supporting veterans in need across the country and those who are affected by natural disasters. Right now, Amazon Prime members will receive fast two-day shipping. Go to simplycleanfoods.net. That's simplycleanfoods.net. But do it today. Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum has said, you will own nothing and you will love it. And that's represented by what's going on across the planet today, where the economy of the world is in free fall. And nowhere is it more in evidence than with our own President Biden deliberately trying to sabotage what we have, access to food, other resources. So Americans are in a unique position, really for the first time in our history, we're going to have to provide for ourselves or subject ourselves to the whim of the government. Do you really trust a government to feed you that left a thousand Americans behind enemy lines in Afghanistan? I don't think so. So where do you go? When you ask the question, who's the best prepper out there today? There's only one answer. Ready Made Resources and Robert Griswold. I call him King Prepper. And that's how a lot of people think of him. You have everything there you'd want from night vision to storable food how to prepare cooking in emergency situations books and videos on how to prepare alternative energy communication first aid that you wouldn't think of natural antibiotics you name it bob has it now here's the good thing about bob griswold that no one else does but him you don't have to buy anything to talk to him if you're not sure where to start with your preparation, no obligation phone call directly to Bob. You can talk to him for free. Most people will charge you an arm and a leg for a half hour conversation. 
That's not Bob Griswold. He cares about helping America get prepared. Go to readymaderesources.com or you can call the number directly at 800-627-3809. Again, that contact information, readymaderesources.com for the best prepping outfit in the country or call Bob Griswold directly, 800-627-3809.